All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at some glow ups as was suggested by you guys from TikTok, and we'll analyze whether they actually experienced a real transformation or they changed a few things and had what we'd like to call a grow up. So the difference between a glow up and a grow up was explained in this video, and the names should make it pretty obvious as to what they are. The first thing we should always be considering when analyzing a glow up and to see if it's actually doable in your case, you know, if you can follow that advice is the age difference between the before and after pictures. Because I could say I had a glow up from the age of 2 to 10, but that's not really a glow up, it's just growing up. So it's not a very logical argument and we can't really take much advice from there. The majority of viral before and after transformations you see on TikTok, Reddit and anywhere else online are just really grow ups. They're just people growing up, going through puberty and saying that they mewed and they did this and that and you should buy their red light therapy <laughs> supplements and devices and you too can get those no they just grew up guys come on please don't fall for that okay so this is the first transformation and regarding the age difference well we can't be very certain about our age in the before and after pictures but it appears that there it's not a very big significant age difference mainly because the facial features are more or less the same and clearly the transformation is not solely due to her hair contrary to what she's writing in the video the first noticeable change is in the skin. In this before picture, there's acne on her chin, cheeks, and even forehead. It's completely gone in the after picture. Her acne likely improved, and she probably used makeup to cover the redness of the face. Also, TikTok filter. It does seem there's like there's a filter because we see artifacts in the image itself. TikTok filters, much like any other AI, is not perfect. It doesn't have 100% accuracy, so they leave behind little artifacts which are just pixels where they're not sure, and those can be detected. And that's why some things just look filtered you know they have that classic filtered look it's because of image artifacts an interesting paper by richard m timms looks at the results of acne and the impact and perception of acne on both younger and more mature faces and the results show that the clear skin faces for both young and mature faces had significantly higher ratings of attractiveness and were also perceived as more friendly sociable ambitious and honest among other attributes for which clear skinned faces were rated more favorably. So the biggest change here in the glow up is really just taking the photo from a downward angle and taking it from a less downward angle and also having clear skin and using a bit of filter. She's also wearing glasses in the before clip which has been shown in many studies to make people appear less attractive and in the after clip she's not wearing glasses and also seems to be wearing lashes. Many studies such as eyelashes and attraction published in the Journal of Vision explains that eyelash length and fullness are significantly correlated with facial attractiveness. She's also wearing makeup around the eyes which increases facial contrast and again has been shown to positively impact facial attractiveness. The lips are also fuller in the after picture but from what we can tell it seems to be because she's either closing or sucking in her lips in the before clip which makes them appear smaller. In the after clip, her mouth is slightly open, which creates the illusion of fuller lips. And additionally, she seems to have added some lipstick under the bottom lip and upper lip to enhance the fullness of the vermilion. This is a relatively accessible glow up. I wouldn't even call it a glow up. It's just moderate changes to her facial features that most people do anyway, like when they're going out. And it's pretty accessible for people to follow. One important piece of advice for anybody who does want to improve their appearance is to have a focus on the foundations first. You know, focus on getting your clear skin, getting your teeth hygiene, your dental hygiene in check, getting your hair and makeup and bodily features, you know, fat levels, those kind of things in check first before focusing on getting the right cheekbone and the right jaw size and those irrelevant things which come later on. If you do have orthodontic deficiencies, like you have a very weak jawline or you have sleep apnea, then that should be priority. But again, that's very, that's not all of you. So for most people, focus on the foundations, the basics, and you can get a pretty significant difference as we're seeing here from just makeup, lighting, cosmetics, and skin health alone. So the second one is a more significant glow up. And there is a larger age difference in the transformation. In the left, we can say perhaps maybe 15 to 16 and on the right, maybe 23 to 24 because he's got more of his adult features coming in but nevertheless his features have not actually changed all that much so it's an interesting transformation to examine what makes the one on the right so much more attractive the first noticeable change is in the distribution of facial fat where his chin cheekbones and jawline are much more defined and prominent in the after clip this typically happens for most men as they finish puberty and they finish up on their facial development where during puberty, your face is really a blend of baby and adult, and it doesn't really look as good as it should after when you're, you know, a young adult. 
is jawline has a strong demarcating shadow. Basically, it's the shadow that outlines the jawline, which is what happens when someone either loses facial fat, achieves a stronger jawline just by growing or through orthodontics or even through dermal fillers or implants. Basically, what's happening here is that the jaw bones push against the skin so the mandibular body and creates a tighter look with more facial contour. It's basically pulling the skin very tightly so that there is no more sagging. And in this case, he hasn't probably had any procedure to lose facial fat, just general aging. This is quite a common phenomenon as most people who have chubby cheeks as a teenager tend to lose the buckle fat pad and they shrink with age when they enter their mid-twenties. For women, this is more common as they go from baby fat to what we like to call the womanly face. You know, there's a lot of videos on that on TikTok. And for men, this tends to happen a bit later at around 26, 27, where they really come into that manly masculine face. His body fat levels seem to have decreased as well, and we can see he has gained a significant amount of muscle mass over the years. Joy Lay and colleagues in their paper, The Influence of Body Composition Effects on Male Facial Masculinity and Attractiveness, have shown that more muscle mass and less fat mass increase perceived facial masculinity, so they make you look more manly and increase facial attractiveness, especially in short-term dating context. The hairstyle has also changed with longer hair on top which elongates the face and gives him a more balanced look because he actually has a bit of a tall face. His face is matured which is normal for his age and we can see that he has a different facial expression in the before and after which we also have to consider by smiling he does seem more friendly, approachable and also happy and people do connect with people that are happier rather than looking like they're very miserable. You guys also need to pay attention that the lighting is also different here. There's a flash in the second picture which has a noticeable impact on the final look of the picture and how the shadows of the jawline are reflected. So by having soft lighting in the left and having harsh lighting in the right, the face is much more defined in the right because the lighting is allowing it to be defined. This TikTok is obviously not the best for doing any kind of analysis or even before and after comparison, but I'm happy for him that he managed to have this glow up. Uh, more correctly, it would just be a grow up because I don't see any significant differences from the before and after. This is the natural course that his face would have taken had he not really done anything to change it. For the third face, we notice a pretty big difference in body fat levels. In the vast majority of cases, looking at only the face does give an accurate enough idea of somebody's body fat. Where this has been shown by Vinet Coetzee and colleagues in their paper about facial adiposity, attractiveness and health. They also found that women with an intermediate amount of facial fat are judged healthier and more attractive than women with more facial fat or with extremely low levels of facial fat. And Kalik et al. 1998 found no reliable relationship between your facial attractiveness and the general health, which means that facial attractiveness in general is more or less a perception. We have these perceptions of what we think is healthy, and if you meet those perceptions of what we think is healthy, whether or not you are actually healthy, then you will be rated as attractive. In the case of this woman, her face looks significantly slimmer, her cheekbones are more apparent, the facial harmony has improved, and that the fat loss has greatly contributed to the change in the two faces. Moreover, her face appears more feminine on the right in the before picture, her facial fat also makes it look wider, squared, and more masculine. Although there appears to be a filter on the after picture, we can also see that she has better skin homogeneity and a more even skin tone, which again plays an essential role in skin attractiveness, as we've talked about many times ad nauseum. She also wears lashes in the after picture and makeup around her eyes, which makes them appear bigger and more feminine. Though coloured contacts haven't really been proven to increase attractiveness, they definitely make her face more striking and interesting. But another critical thing we notice is her eyebrow fullness and definition, in the before picture, her eyebrows look thin, almost invisible, and eyebrows are essential because they give structure to the face and the eye area itself. So you can imagine the eyes as being the picture and the eyebrows as the frame of the picture. In fact, Jian Jiao and colleagues found that facial attractiveness is directly affected by the eyebrows itself, and in her picture we can see that she's used makeup to make her eyebrows look more dense, defined, and darker. This increases facial contrast and gives more structure to the face, and definitely improves facial attractiveness. You can also notice that her nose looks different in that it's less wide, her nasal tip and nasal bridge are also both thinner, and this could be an optical illusion just because the face has gotten wider and older, the things that we thought were not in proportion automatically fall into proportion just by the virtue of everything else around the face changing. If we look at those pictures then we can clearly see that the nose structure has changed and she most definitely may have had a rhinoplasty 
but the nose is less wide, thinner and more defined. The nasal tip and bridge are also thinner as well. Most rhinoplasty patients tend to refine their nose but also preserve their cultural identity and rhinoplasty is a procedure that really needs to take into account where the patient's background is from. Adeza Omomo and colleagues explain the process for black noses in their study where they use aloe base resection to narrow a wide nasal base and nostril and also reduce the size of the nostril itself. Then they use additional sutures to narrow the nasal tip and place cartilage so that the tip is pointier. And so generally with black noses, if there is a rhinoplasty involved, it involves making the nose narrower and also making the nose slightly pointier within reason. So not making it too narrow and not making it too pointy so that it has some structure to it. In this example, she's also using lipstick to make her lips look fuller and increasing facial contrast again, much like all the other examples we've seen. And finally, we can tell from the before picture that that's generally a badly taken picture. And so it's not really fair to compare the two from different angles and lightings but nonetheless we can use it to talk about how you can follow some of the advice to have your own positive improvement in your facial aesthetics that being said if you would like to get your face assessed and learn about how you can improve your facial features and the way you look and feel your best and have your self-confidence restored then order a Coove's aesthetic assessment from our team of doctors and dentists and have us walk you through what your options are and where you can improve